Hello everybody. Happy Tuesday. So I've been cooking in the kitchen all day. I got all burners going. <laughs> all burners. It's pretty hot in here. Um, I made a really delicious hamburger soup. And I want to share my recipe because it's really, really good. I took two carrots, two celery stalks, one medium onion, and in less than a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, I sweated those out till they were soft in this pan. Then I added about a pound of baby bella mushrooms, chopped up really small, and, um, and I took that out and I put it in a little pan on the side, and I grabbed my 85, I think it was 85.90 um, ground beef, or, no, it was, it was a 95. It didn't have much oil, but I, I still, I browned it up, drained it really good, and I kept some of the, a little bit of the oil to make a little bit of a slurry and a little bit of a gravy, and I just added some cornstarch to that little bit of oil, and I only used about a tablespoon of the oil. It probably yielded about a cup and a half of oil after I skimmed it. Um... Because, you know, there's recipes all over the internet that I was looking at. I looked at Pioneer Woman uh, Ray Drummond's hamburger soup, which I love. I looked at Natasha Kitchens, which I love. Um, but I wanted to add my own spin because I didn't have beef broth. I only had one packet of um, Goya reduced sodium beef, beef broth. And all of the recipes I looked at were calling for 8 to 10 cups of beef broth or Worcestershire or peppers or this or that. So I did I did my aromatics, sweated them out, put them aside, got my beef in there, drained all my fat, added a little cornstarch to about a tablespoon of that, threw it back in, and let the meat keep cooking with the mushrooms. Then um, gave it a layer of paprika, and I did a... A good layer of salt-free Mrs. Dash onion and herb. I haven't even put garlic in that yet. It still needs parsley. I chopped down two small russet, they were really small russet potatoes. Um, two two good-sized carrots. Oh, it should be three, like two celery, three carrot. But these carrots were huge. And then my secret agents that I used was, I put that one beef bouillon in there, and it called for, a lot of them called for diced tomatoes or whole peeled tomatoes. I had two Roma tomatoes in the house. I just cut those in half and threw them in and diced them up. And then I had a can of salt-free crushed tomatoes, 28 ounces. I put that in. And then in a separate bowl, I took a good swig of balsamic vinegar from the wonderful Dollar Store which is delicious, and it's a great flavor agent. And I mixed that with a generous tablespoon of brown sugar with a little cinnamon, and then a reduced sodium um, packet of soy sauce. So I threw that in. I cooked it down, brought it to a boil, then cooked it down. I added about, I probably put about six to eight cups of water in it. I'm getting ready to put more water in it. And two tablespoons, almost two, of tomato paste. That's it. Green beans. I had some frozen green beans. You can put anything you want in this. This is more like a chili. Um, it's hamburger soup. I got my thin frozen green beans. You could do peas. You could do corn. You could go southwest, do corn and black beans. You could. I put some paprika in it. I put some crushed hot pepper, cinnamon, brown sugar, regular black pepper, Mrs. Dash onion and herb. I put one packet of no sodium, sodium free chicken broth. And I put sweet basil in it. Sweet basil. My parsley is going in in a minute. I got broccoli cooking in here. Got my little vermicelli cooking here. And so I'm doing a little broccoli and pasta, or a little pasta with that, later. I haven't eaten yet, or maybe not. 
that a lot of this is getting frozen. And I might put a little bit more water in it. I think it needs it. And um, that's all I did. I wanted to share the recipe because I'm just really surprised that whenever I add the balsamic vinegar to a beef recipe that calls for like Worcestershire sauce or a lot of beef broth, the balsamic vinegar with soy sauce, with brown sugar, and the tomato paste, perfect. But even better if you have a couple of Roma tomatoes, which aren't that expensive right now, throw those in. So tomato paste, crushed tomato, everything was salt free except for the tomato paste. And I did give a smidgen of non-iodized um, non salt to the meat. That's it. Um, that's it. I'm getting ready to drain my broccoli and toss it into some ice. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm finishing up a hat today, and I will come back and show. Um, I've got. I've been working on making a video for a hat I'm making for Ukraine. Um, I have quite a few of them made already. They've already been donated. Um, blue and yellow. I am down to one yellow for yarn. I'm making one in purple and pink as a sample one, so I can show you what it looks like. It's a Fair Isle Tam, and the atrocities we're seeing on the news is just making me want to give people something warm, uh, something warm to put on their head. Um, just after fleeing for their lives, people dying, being hypervigilant, not knowing what's going on, what's coming at them next. Um, it's horrifying, and, um, you know, they're, they don't have electric, they're hiding in basements and shelters and things, and being on trains and buses and waiting in lines for a cup of soup and bread, and I just think if you have your head warm, your feet, um, it's good. The only thing that bothers me, it helps, because I think that when you get through when you're escaping the, t the danger, you're not cold. But then later, your body reacts and you start shaking like crazy. And you need to be warm. And especially with people losing loved ones and them being dying and being killed. Um, so shock. I know for me, after something very tragic, I will just shake for days and be cold. So I always think it's nice to have your head covered. The only thing I'm worried about is... The Fair Isle Tam that I'm making. I'm wondering if it's smart for Ukrainians to have their colors showing anymore. Because it identifies them. And if Russian soldiers are just going after them. And like savages killing them. Babies, children, elderly in the street. Um, that's not war anymore. That's not an occupation or an invasion. That's savage that's terrorism that's that's horrible it's war crimes it's horrible so um after i made a few of the hats in the color of the ukraine flag i thought uh oh um because i have a really beautiful i'll show you the color i've got hey Paul. hey justin hey my little man say hello to everybody I got the prettiest color blue. Jumbo, I mean, it's just beautiful. Mainstay, that's the color. And the yellow I got, I only had one. <laughs> I only had one yellow left, but it's really pretty. I'm waiting for the other yellow. No, and then I got another blue. I got another blue. Where'd that yellow go? I got pink. Blue. There it is. That's the color yellow I want with that blue. I only have one left. So, I'm waiting. I'm on a wait list to get it. Um, but I'll come back and show you the pattern. And that's what I'm doing today. And Dustin's being handsome. Sitting in this spot in there while I cook. He's being really good. And I hope everybody's having an awesome day. I hope you'll try that recipe. I'm going to write it down. And I'm going to go sit down. I've been in this kitchen since 6 o'clock this morning. I'm going to go sit for a minute and drink my water. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.